you, Richard. So thank you ever so much for coming, Wendy. It's absolutely wonderful to have you here, and of course for all your support for Animal Aid. So I know you've supported us for many years, but when did you first become aware of Animal Aid? Well, um, yeah, first of all, thank you. Thank you for having me here, and um, thank you very much. It's a massive honour to be asked to be patron, which is a really, uh, really recent. Uh, things so thank you so much. I was really excited, and I was especially excited because, and in answer to your first question, um, when I was at school, which is a very long time ago now, um, in fact, let's say 35, 36 years ago was when I first became aware of uh, animal aid. Because somebody had brought into the playground, um, I mean, we were like teenagers, you know, but they brought into the playground a, a leaflet. And I specifically remember it being animal aid, and I can, I can picture the, you know, the playground and this leaflet, and the, you know, we were looking at it because, of course, back in those days, no one had, you know, the internet, social media. And I remember my friends and I looking at this leaflet and there was something about vivisection and oh, we were all, my God, does this kind of thing go on, you know? And actually when I think of my own children now who, you know, have seen everything the internet has ever had to offer about animal cruelty and every other kind of cruelty, you can imagine. Uh, we were so sheltered back in those days. and. It was, so it was a really a more, you know, a standout moment that I remember Animal Aid and I even remember the fact that it was uh, uh, Tombridge, you know, and that stuck in my mind because I had some relatives down there. And so it's quite kind of um, really uh, amazing for me that after all these years, I'm now a patron, which is quite astonishing. So thank you, big, big thank you to you. That's an absolutely wonderful story. So you must have become aware of us almost at the beginning because we were, we're only 40 years old actually this year. Yeah. So you must have found out about us in the very early stages, I guess, when our founder, Jean Pink, was yes. still running it. So um, that's absolutely amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. Obviously, I was only about two. <laughs> <laughs> Before I before I answer this, because I don't want to bore people. Who who or did anybody in this room? Because I know an awful lot of people did go on the vegan cruise this year. Did anyone go? Oh God, you've heard of this before, love. Sorry. <laughs> You're going to be very bored. <laughs> I'll try I'll try and pepper it with something different for you. <laughs> oh good. All right. Thank God for that. <laughs> uh, right. So of course, sorry, I forgot the question. Oh yes, how did I become vegetarian? Yes, that's right. Um, it was a very uh, penny drops, you know, moment for me, which I suspect it, it is for a, a lot of people. Um, the story was that when I was um, about 12 years old, we were having Sunday lunch, always had lamb chops for Sunday lunch, which I always loved. You know, I, I absolutely remember loving the smell of mum cooking them and you know, eating them. And um, this particular Sunday at lunch, I was tucking into my lamb chop, and at the same time, um, a programme was on uh, the television, we were watching while we were eating, which was Country File, which I had since come to loathe the, the programme, which really annoys me. But um, uh, Country File was on, and they were doing something, and anyway, on the screen was these lambs, you know, in the field, running around. And it was that pivotal moment where, was, oh, I'm going, oh, look at those lovely little lambs, you know, on the television. Oh, I'm eating one. <laughs> and um, I specifically remember spitting it out. And um, much to my mum, she said, what are you doing? And um, spitting it out, putting it down, and I never ate meat again from that point. And it really was one of those, hands up, who's had a penny drops moment? 
I think a lot of, yeah, and I think a lot of, uh, a lot of people have that, as opposed to something that, I know people have that, you know, and it comes on gradually, the, the turning vegetarian or vegan. And, uh, but no, mine was a very much penny dropped moment, and so was my husband's. We were at um, another lovely charity I'm based on, Viva, who you will know, obviously, many of you will know. We were at a, a Viva event, and they'd done um, some undercover filming of some British um, uh, farms, you know, and uh, which was just horrendous footage, but nevertheless, we were sitting there watching it, and I was with my uh, husband. I think we were married at that point. Anyway, we hadn't, we, we got married fairly quickly, so it wasn't that long. But he, he sort of still ate a bit of meat, and we were looking at this footage, and he just turned to me in the middle of this film and said, my God, I'm now vegetarian. You know, that was his point. You know, everyone sort of, not everyone, but lots of people have this kind of moment. But after, um, see, I don't think I, did I say that in that other talk about my husband? I don't know. I might have just slipped that one in there. Yes. <laughs> anyway, after that, um, after, sorry, I've actually had a migraine for three days, and this isn't the talk. I was going to give a completely different talk, and I said I've taken so many tablets that I need somebody to hold my hand through whatever we're going to talk about. So Isabella's kindly sitting here asking me these questions. So if I'm slightly, um, slightly think, God, what is she on? I'm on quite a lot of tablets. <laughs> All above board, you know. Anyway, um, my mum, after being slightly annoyed that I was no longer eating meat, um, decides that she too has always actually wanted to become vegetarian. You know, she just needed the bit of a push to do it. Obviously, I was the push. And so she then would not have meat in the house at all. I mean, really, quite rapidly, yeah, wouldn't have meat in the house. Which meant my dad, um, who could only ever at best cook like beans on toast for himself, he was just forced to not have meat then. Now, of course, over the years, he has since, you know, done it of his own accord. But, uh, but no, mother became very, uh, very militant about it, really. But the, oh, that's mother. That's mother. The, <laughs> but the best, <laughs> the best story about my mum suddenly, you know, doing this 360 on the old, on the old meat front, is, um, I know she's all, we've always loved animals in that house. We've had lots and lots of rescue animals. But um, my 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 mum one day saw this heron outside in the garden. By we had quite a big <coughs> pond, and this pond had about two thousand pounds worth of koi carp in it. And the pond was too big to net over or anything like that, you know. So it, this heron chomped its way through two grams worth of fish, you know, over several weeks, <laughs> much much to father's. Um, dismay and mothers obviously and then of course it had eaten the last koi carp and mum looked out to the window one day this heron was sitting there and it was cold and you know they put their wings up and fluff their feathers like this and she felt so sorry for this heron because it hadn't got any fish left that she went hot foot down to the co-op and bought some cod and parsley sauce came home cooked it in the microwave went down to the pond and laid it out on a lily leaf <laughs> and she almost put like a knife and fork and a serviette there you know but anyway then she came back up and was peeping around the curtains to see if this heron would eat this card in party so of course it wasn't in the least bit bloody interesting in this flew off you know in disgust but um I often tell that story because it, it really tickles me and uh, I think it, at first it embarrassed my mum but now it's kind of, she has to, she has to understand that I am going to tell that story because it's too good a story not to tell. Anyway, how did I become a vegan? Um, after, actually it took some years, I think it was when I was about 25, so 25 years ago I became 
uh, vegan, and that was because another leaflet in the post, um, but this time from Peter, and um, again, I, I can't believe now that I didn't know or make it my business to find out. You know, you look back and think, God, I'm so ignorant. But I didn't know about the horrors of the dairy industry. You know, it's just one of those things that you kind of, I don't know, I didn't know about. As I say, 25 years ago, you hadn't got the exposure that you have now with, you know, being able to Google things and all the internet, you know, it's so much easier now to find out these things, or they will find you, you know, make it their business to find you. And really, I, again, it was that moment of, oh my God, is this actually what happens? Penny drops. I better not have any more dairy. And so, uh, yeah, I remember, you know, there's a little bit of sadness of chucking all these things out of my wardrobe that were wool or silk or leather or this, that and the other. But I thought, you know, no, once you, I mean, I am that kind of person that once I've made my mind up, then that is it, you know, it's no half measures. I had a, a car at the time that had got some leather seats in and I had those replaced and, you know, all that kind of, uh, all that kind of stuff. But yes, it, it was really finding out, um, finding out actually what really goes on in the dairy industry. And it's not, oh, daisy and buttercup in the field, you know, the happy farmer and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, that was going to happen. Back. That was <laughs> that was my vegan moment. <laughs> That's fantastic. It sounds as though you made the transition pretty quickly. You sort of found out about it, and the next day you changed your wardrobe, mm. changed everything. Oh no, definitely yes, yeah. Once I've made up my mind, it was really quick. Yeah. And I'm sure you found that things have changed a huge amount since you first went vegan. Um, how long ago was it that you went vegan? Twenty-five years. Wow. So. <laughs> you must have seen huge changes. So you actually must have gone vegan about the first Animal Aid Christmas Fair or Christmas Without Cruelty, the, the 25th anniversary of it. So uh, that's amazing. So these days, what do you think the best thing is about being vegan? Well, I was just gonna say actually, that in, in what you were saying just about, about you know being different than 25 years ago, I don't know about you guys, but I've really seen a difference just even in the last 12 months yeah, with yeah. Um, just like mainstream uh, stuff like, you know, Pizza Express have now got vegan pizza, as, as in vegan cheese, not just a kind of, oh, we'll leave the cheese off anything, you know. Um, and I tweeted the other day, I was at uh, Clapham Junction Station and the bagel factory had, had a big... Um, sign outside with this vegan with they now do bagels with vegan cream cheese and there's there's other ones leon and, and pret a manger people like that i've actually seen like posters in the window with the v word on it which actually even a few years ago you know i think people but saying you were vegan is now seems to be very much which is great the rest of the world are now catching up with us. You know, it seems, but it seems to be quite on trend, you know, to be vegan. Whereas even, even two or three years ago, it was still a kind of, oh, well, what does that mean type thing, you know. God, a few years ago, 25 years ago, you may as well have said, you come from the planet Zob. It was, um, oh, I remember somebody saying to me, oh, what on earth do you eat curried ice cubes? I mean, they just hadn't, you know, couldn't think. Interestingly enough though, 20 years ago, I was in New York and ordered a pizza off a takeaway menu and vegan cheese topping was on the menu. So we have caught up, but it's as a, like a big city, say London, it's taken us 20 years, you know, you think of it. So was that, can't remember the question. Oh yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, the oh, the, uh, the best thing about being vegan, oh no, no, I didn't answer, no, the best thing, no, the best thing is, do you know, I think the best thing is actually being able to sleep at night mm -hmm. and have a clear conscience because 
I think now as well, I know I keep mentioning the, the internet, you know, but for anyone who's on social media, you are, it's never far away, the, the um, you know, the awful pictures, images, videos, um, which I never shy away from because, you know, God, that's what happened. It, unless you're prepared to, to face it head on, you can't help. You know, I don't think you can you can get involved and, and help. So unfortunately, you have kind of sometimes got to grit your teeth and, and see what really is going on out there. And I do often think, you know, being, being vegan, sometimes I think, well, my conscience is clear, you know? So, yeah, that's the best thing. That's a, a wonderful answer, definitely. I mean, by going vegan, you're obviously doing the best you possibly can to, to help stop animal suffering now. Um, and when you went vegan all those years ago, obviously it was, it was difficult. What was the worst thing, do you think, about going vegan then? What was it that you, you really had to do without that obviously these days you wouldn't have to do without? <laughs> Now, I don't know if it was about do without, but it's more the, the worst thing, say back then, or the most frustrating thing, was the explanation, like mm -hmm. having to explain yourself all the time. And I don't know about, uh, about anyone here, but I still get really, really tits off about that. If I'm at a, on a, having a meal out or something, what I just loathe is the, like, the Spanish Inquisition <laughs> of, you know, oh, well, what are you eating? You know, like they're looking at your plate, and then that awful thing if you're at some function and you get brought your meal half an hour before everybody else, so because yours are vegan, you know. And so there's all that kind of thing to contend with. Um, I was at, actually went to something once which my friend had booked. Um, this thing is some marquee, this lunch, you know, she wanted to book us lunch at this place. It was wicked and some other do. She said, don't worry, I'll tell them you're vegan. Because it was very much not a vegan or veggie kind of event. Tell them you're vegan. We get there, she gave them plenty of notice. And the, and the lady, you know, showing us to our seat says, now, we did tell the chef you were vegan. And he didn't know what to do for you. So I thought she was going to say, you know, the usual that you expect. So he did a salad or, a, you know, bowl of carrots or something. But she finished the sentence. She said, the chef didn't know what to do for you. So he didn't do anything. Oh, are you kidding me? Hello? I mean, that, and now that was only a few years ago. And he well could have looked on the internet. And you know, uh, but sometimes I, I do go into a restaurant and think, you know, any chef, to be honest, any chef worth their salt surely is going to come up with something, even even at relatively short notice, you know, let alone giving somebody three weeks to think about it. But um, you know, again, I forgot we've gone off piste. Oh, the worst thing. Oh yes. The worst thing. Oh, yes. Then, no, the worst thing oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that particular chef, yes. Um, I think um, another worst thing is, which again might resonate with some people, is, you know, once once you have seen the light and you are, you know, not eating animals and this, that, the other, I find it incredibly frustrating um, to deal with negativity, say, from other people or, or, say, the penny not dropping for other people. I'm not really on about maybe going from being vegetarian to vegan because I think naturally people will probably find that path hopefully for themselves. But um, all that kind of, oh, well, I couldn't possibly give up my chicken, you know, all stuff like that. And, uh, oh, well, what do you eat? And you know, I get very frustrated with with um, narrow-mindedness. I think I get very frustrated about that. And, uh, yeah, so, if, you know, obviously I can explain and this, that and the other. And, and um, say, like my mother-in-law, because you're filming this. <laughs> um, sorry, Kath. <laughs> but, you know, when... Uh, uh, I think I, I gave her um, corn once in like instead before actually they did the vegan corn chunks, which is good. But my 
husband has likes the corn, which chance so he's vegetarian. And um, I gave Kath these, and, and she said, well, I can't tell it from chicken, you know. And I thought, this is it, this is great, what a breakthrough. Yeah, but then, but then after that, she's carried on eating chicken. And I said, well, if you can't tell corn from chicken, why are you still eating chicken?
It's not to, I won't bore you. Anyway, it says, Tis the season of joy, the season of cheer. So if you're feeling bright and perky, bake a nut roast to munch for your merry Christmas lunch and spare the poor old turkey.
Um, charities like um, Animal Aid and, and, and what you do, of what you, you know, what you have to see um, day in, day out, is completely different, I think, to probably what a lot of us do day in, day out as we go about our, you know, normal lives. And we kind of, obviously, because we're passionate about animals and we dip in and out of the kind of, um, the horrendousness of it. And it always strikes me, you know, with people like yourselves and, and the people who work in your team, and it's rather like to me when you hear of the sort of policemen who, or the, or the police divisions who have to day in, day out look at child pornography and stuff like that. And, you know, what you, what you guys do having to face what you face every day and deal with it and do something about it, I think just, you know, really, really deserves just major recognition from um, from us who support you and your patrons, <laughs> which is fantastic, thank you. And um, just that, you know, you do that and you shine the, the light for the rest of us to be able to support you and go forward because doing what you do is really special. So thank you. Round of applause, please! <laughs> Thank you ever so much. Let's have a big round of applause for Wendy.